Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Final Fantasy Reactions video. And today we're going to be looking over seven Neo Vision units that are going to be coming out in the game that you may be excited for. At least one of them, well, I'm, I'm sure at least one of them will excite you at least in some way. So, this is not a tier list at all. This is in oh, no particular order. There will be seven. I'm going to do the confidence level and I'm going to be listing at least, I mean, there's going to be one in here that is a collab unit. But I'm being very confident in saying that it is going to come to global. So, with that being said, let's get into the seven units here. So, <clears throat> remember guys, no particular order, no tier list, or anything like that. So, first of all, let's go over Summoner Lena. And I'm not going to be doing a full review here because that would mean you won't watch the global review when it comes out. So, it's just a very brief, brief summary, like a like a prologue. Pro is here, 24 hit, three times AMW, there's no delay. There's no delay on this. So three three times AMW chain little burst that is imbuable. So very useful for Dark Vision, for example. She's in my Dark Vision scene now, so very good on that. 86% full break on the little burst. She's not an SLB unit because she does have a brave shifts, obviously. 85% full break on demand, pretty good. And she's a roll compression where she has she's a breaker, she can pretty provoke her. And she has wind in peril, and a damage, and she's a chainer as well. So I mean, I forgot to write that down too. So she has a lot of things that she has going for her. The only con is that the, the base form, not really that impressive. At least to me, at least to me, it's not really that impressive. I don't like it too much. Uh, I, I feel like it's just missing the mark on that. So I think the base form is just not as useful as the rage shift form. So you really need to have at least EX one to get the most out of Lena. And moving on. Tyvis, if you've been seeing my channel lately, I've made a few videos on him. So he has 50% self fire ant. He also has, I forgot to mention, he has a he has a pre-buff of a smaller fire ant and some stats as well. So turn one, he's already ready to go if you want to use his little burst. His little burst, his his non-SLB little burst is already pretty strong, 150 times modifier. So along with the great sword and peril and all those kind of things as well. So that's pretty good. AoE SLB. Um, and also LB unit, so pretty unique. Great sword in peril, and also, like I mentioned, both L LB and SLB are pretty strong. The only cons that I can think of is that he's locked to his TMR, which has low attack stat, but it does give bonus attack for like flat attack for him, so I guess that's okay. And the reason I say he's locked to his TMR because his S TMR is a materia, which doesn't give any stats, and it just gives him or anyone. A modifier increase after a certain amount of turns i think it's turn four to give the modifier increase to a lunar burst so it doesn't really help him very much because he wants to lunar burst on turn three with his s will be if he's the x3 of course um so it doesn't really help him too much so that's the, that's the problem with that he's locked to his tmr and a we might not always be wanted but i don't think that matters too much anymore so not too many cons there other than just being one use grand as well Pretty much everybody has one use grandness at this point. Next, Co Coastal Freesia, or whatever her name will be in Global. Pros, 300% little burst damage on SLB, unfortunately. 100% Reaper and Aquatic Killer buff. This is not tied to anything. Wind Aerith, basically, just not without without the 400% buff. STMR is great for New Vision Yuna, who has 200% um, Spirit TDH. So pretty good on that. The cons, and it's an SLB unit, so you'll have to have a lot of resources to make her useful. And EX3 is required for the 160% Aquatic Killer, unfortunately. Aquatic Killer buff, I should mention. So that's some unfortunate things when it comes to SLB units sometimes. And of course, since we mentioned Yuna, she has to be on this list, right? So here's Yuna. Pros provides evoke damage, low burst mod boosts. Uh, 30, 30 times mod boost to any evoke um, little burst has to be little burst only. So, Draconian Princess Fina um, herself, I think, and also you know Luna Freya, Terra, Ferris, all those kinds as well. 100%, 160% Reaper Killer buff on a, on our base little burst. So that's not tied to any EX ability. 30% Dark Field. Anima Summon, so very good for, for Sephiroth, and I already showed that off in one of my videos recently. And a light evoke finisher in her brave shift form, so pretty good as well. 
She's extremely hard to gear. Well, she can be geared, but gearing her and gearing her well are different things here, guys. So I, that's why I put in big quotation marks there, well. So I know there will be people in the comment section will tell me you can still gear her, but I'm saying you have to gear her well to do a lot of damage. And that's the hard part because she's based off of spirit and not magic. And if you look at almost all the all the evoke stuff, it's all magic based. So it's very hard to gear her well. And she needs the X3 for her staff and barrel. So that's a, that's a problem as well for that situation. Next, Roka, haste mechanic, cooldown reduction for an ally. So that means that if you use a cooldown, you use Roka, that cooldown will be reduced by one or two, depending on what you're using her, either her grandest or her LB, or SLB, I mean. 100% plant and stone killer buff, 3% ogre damage buff for all allies, and also 35 or 45% earth damage. Those are SLB numbers though. And the cons, SLB and so, a lot of resources are required to get her to, you know, high SLB number and 160% stone killer buff is locked behind EX3, unfortunately. I know, lot, I know no one's going to like that, so that may change to EX2, but still, it would be EX2. I mean, still. Legendary Guardian Orin wins Sephiroth, but in SLB form, basically. I'm not going to go too much into that. And, yet, and, the, and the thing that he has over Sephiroth a little bit is that he has a 300% TH instead of 200, so you could use the OG Cloud TMR, or you could use Zack. No, I wouldn't use Zack's TMR, or STMR, I mean. But I'm sure there's many ways to get, when you could use um, two Marshall Gloves for the for the 400% TH. So that's, that's a positive over Sephiroth, for example. Um, and the cons are in SLB units, so a lot of, re a lot of things are required for him to be good. And his other abilities are very mediocre. He does have a 160 times mod finisher, but I mean, it's a critical hit and has a chance of missing. He has mediocre, his, his other abilities are just really bad. So he basically is only LB focused. LB and SLB focused, mainly SLB though, for the 350 times modifier, a wind finisher. And the last one, I'm gonna be, this is a confident, this is a puff of the shirt, confidence level um, thing here where I'm gonna be putting him in. And I, I just, I, I really am sure that it's gonna be coming to global. So, graph is here. Obviously, you guys have been seeing it. If you've been checking out my channel lately, I've been making a lot of graph videos. He's bonkers, bonkers. Insane mods that go on, our, on cooldown instead of any SL, LB or SLB. So on turn three, you get a huge modifier that doesn't require any LB usage whatsoever. You can reach over 10,000 attack. Doesn't require much gear and his brave shift form a little funny on that one. Uh, I'll tell you why in a second. And he can be an LB finisher or an ability finisher and the cooldown can be imbued. So the reason why he able to get uh, 10,000 attack is because it has an unarmed passive that gives him a boatload of attack that is different from normal attack percentage. So he can have 300% attack or is it 400? Whatever the max attack is, he can hit the blue number, but then he gets a huge number that is separate from that it gives them even more attacks. That's why you're able to see him get reaching those huge numbers. The cons are he's left to earth. Need the X2 for the mod boost for the for the mod boost of the little burst there. And all those other stuff like the attack boost and stuff like that. And you need to wait until turn three to get that powerful CD in his brave shift form. Here's the here's the thing that people are are uh Hyping, harping on, but it doesn't. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna put it here just. To, I'm gonna put. I put it here just to talk about. Um, no variants, as he can't equip weapons and he can't equip literally anything besides accessories and materials and vision card, in his brave shift form. In his base form, you can equip a lot of more, a lot of other things. Um, if you do, if you do force a weapon on him, you lose out on the high attack on our passive that we just mentioned. And he doesn't benefit from weapon and perils, but he doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to matter. It really does not seem to matter. He does not care about variants. He does not care weapon and perils. He still does more damage than Sephiroth and probably Tyvus. I'm gonna, I might even do a Tyvus versus uh, Gra Graf and, um, comparison video next. Maybe if I, can, if I can get that working, I'll probably do that next. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if we'll see. If, we'll really see if weapon and peril and 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 in uh, variants matters with him because Tyvus is also one of the strongest units in the game as well. So I would say that's a pretty, that's a better comparison compared to Sephiroth. But Sephiroth, but guys, like I'm saying, Sephiroth is still strong enough to beat literally anything in the game. 
um, because he's just so strong. So don't don't be just too discouraged. But so, uh, uh, Graf is just so insane, like incredibly insane. I'm really happy for that because Xeno Gears is my all-time favorite game, and you can't see it back there yet. Hopefully, I can fix the lighting soon. I have the Xeno Gears CD back there on my display case. Um, very nice. So guys, thank you guys for watching. If you did like this video, kind of this kind of video, please give a like. It really does mean a lot. If you're new around here, or if you've been around and you just haven't wanted to subscribe, make sure you subscribe so you can get a lot of more interesting videos like this one. And I have to see you in the very next one. Peace.